gurus are the ones lying to you. Hello, Dr. Joe here. So, cholesterol lies that you have been told and are still being told. That is the subject of today's video. How about we dive straight in with this very nice study coming out of Miami. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about cholesterol lies. Cholesterol lies, lessons from Miami, because we have a study from the Miami Heart Study Pool that was published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology with the title, Serum Lipoproteins are associated with coronary atherosclerosis in asymptomatic U.S. adults without traditional risk factors. Asymptomatic being, you know, they haven't got any chest pain that is radiating to the arm or even tightness in the chest or uh, shortness of breath, any of those symptoms, they got none of those and they are individuals without traditional risk factors. Now, something to point out here is that this very study is an open access uh, publication, which means it's not behind a paywall and uh, you can go read it for yourself if you want to geek out on it. So, introduction. Uh, the study is actually about heart disease prevalence in people that you consider to be low-risk individuals, okay? Low-risk individuals. Who are these low-risk individuals? Well, here they are. People who are not diabetic, they haven't got high blood pressure, they are non-smokers, and they're not using any statins at all. These are individuals that will be considered to be low-risk by all accounts. So let's look at a cohort uh, in the study. Well, they had 1,033 individuals. They are all adults aged between 40 to 65 years of age, uh, out of which 55% of them were women, meaning 45% of them were men. So how was the study designed? Well, the study authors ran lab tests for blood lipids. And they also checked these individuals, coronary arteries, for plaques. Plaques is what kills us with heart attacks, okay? If you've got plaque in your artery, that means you're being primed for a heart attack. We don't want plaques at all. So let's look at their results. Well, out of this pool of these 1,033 individuals, 35.9% of them had plaques in their arteries, okay? 35.9%, so arguably 36% had plaques in the arteries. So 36% of them were already primed for heart attacks gradually because we have different degrees of plaques. And uh, uh, they also found that out of this 36% uh, of them, 3.4% already had high-risk plaques, okay? So uh, this is not a joke uh, when it comes to plaques. Uh, but I want you to remember that we're talking about low-risk individuals, people who are not diabetic, hypertensive, non-smokers, not on statins, and yet 3.4% of them already had high-risk plaques. So uh, what's, what else did they find in the study? Well, here's something else they found. The bad cholesterol, which is the LDL cholesterol, if the level was less than 70 mg per deciliter, your plaque prevalence was 13.2%, okay? Now, if your bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, went up to 160 milligram and above, 160 milligram per deciliter and above, the plaque prevalence was 48.2%, okay? 48.2%. So what this is telling us is that, uh, of course, if your LDL cholesterol was low, your risk of having a plaque was lower compared to if it was elevated, uh, your plaque prevalence went up, okay? So there's a correlation here between the levels of LDL cholesterol going up and the risk of having a plaque also going up. So something for you to note there. Now, that's not the only thing they found because uh, don't forget they looked at the entire blood lipids. They also looked at uh, apple lipoprotein B, okay, apple B. And uh, here is something that they drew from this very study. For every 10-point increase in your LDL cholesterol, which is a bad cholesterol, your risk of having a plaque 
went up by 13%. Okay, 13%. So that's not all because they also checked for Apple B, Apple Lipoprotein B. For every 10 point increase in your Apple B, your risk of having a plaque shot up by 20%. Okay, 20%. So LDL is not the only bad boy. Uh, Apple B is even worse. Okay, Apple B is even worse, which was the reason why I did a video some time ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think, where I talked about the fact that we should all be checking our Apple B levels as well, not just LDL cholesterol. We also should be checking for Apple B because Apple B is worse than LDL cholesterol. So these are the blood lipids to be aware of, and they are attendant risk. Uh, of them giving you a plaque in your arteries. And now let's hear from Dr. Joel Kahn. He's the one that wrote this snippet here, this endorsement for my book. He's a cardiologist. This is my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. Links to get a book right below this very video. So what does Dr. Kahn think about this very study from Miami? A really interesting study out of what's called the Miami Heart Study published this week, Journal of American College of Cardiology about 1200 people that said, I don't have heart disease and my labs are pretty darn good. I don't smoke, I don't have diabetes, I don't have hypertension. You would not pick them out. They all had a calcium score CT scan. They all had a coronary CT angiogram as part of the study. What they find overall 37% of the group had heart disease. They didn't know about it, not a high risk group. And the higher your LDL cholesterol, the higher was your risk. Some of the patients had more than 50% of the population with proven clogging of their heart arteries. So it's out there, could be you. Uh, maybe your labs aren't as optimal as these people. Get checked, hashtag test not guess. Get your calcium score, get your CT angiogram, get your lab work. Okay, right so there. here's something you should know. There is a correlation between high LDL cholesterol levels and high APOB levels. Now, there's a small percentage of individuals who have high LDL cholesterol levels, but have low APOB levels. These are the lucky guys. Uh, these are the lucky individuals who can get away with living with you know, high LDL cholesterol levels without really developing plaques in their arteries. But for most people who have high LDL cholesterol levels, their APOB is also gonna be high which means your risk of developing plaques in your arteries is also elevated. So uh, the point is, I always say this, ideally you want to get tested for both, okay? When you do your blood lipids, they should do both the LDL cholesterol levels, the whole gamut of the test, including APOB. Now, I know that there are some places where APOB is not routinely tested for and some people don't want to pay for it, that's fine. If that's the case with you, well, if your LDL cholesterol level is high, if that's the latest test you can do, along with your total cholesterol, if your LDL cholesterol level is high, you should assume that your APOB is also high, which means you need to take necessary steps to bring your LDL cholesterol levels down, and that will also influence your APOB levels too, okay? It's all about lifestyle, okay? Lifestyle management. Uh, it works, and uh, it will continue to work. Now, uh, the next question is going to be, what is the cholesterol lie that I was talking about earlier on? Well, there are videos going around the internet every now and again, okay, a new video pops up about uh, you ignoring your LDL cholesterol levels. In fact, there's a current video going around as we speak saying that you should ignore your bad cholesterol levels, which is the LDL cholesterol levels that, you know, you should ignore it. Well. As far as I'm concerned, these are the gurus that are lying to you, okay? They're the ones lying to you because you saw it from this very study that I shared with you now. Low-risk individuals who are not diabetic, not hypertensive, they don't smoke, they're not on statins, just by virtue of the fact that they have high LDL cholesterol levels and high APOB, they, they have already developed plaques in their arteries. So, and the plaques is what leads to heart attacks, okay? Uh, that's what's killing us. So please do not listen to these gurus that are telling you to ignore your LDL cholesterol levels. If you recall, about nine months ago, I published my own blood lipid results. I shared it with you guys. And if you remember very well, my LDL cholesterol level was 
low at a time, really low. Because that's the mantra that I preach on this very channel. And that's the kind of path that I want you guys to follow. Now, I have shared mine with you. So here is what I request of you guys. Uh, you know, ask those gurus who are encouraging you to live with high LDL cholesterol levels, telling you that high LDL cholesterol level is not a bad thing. Ask those gurus to please publish their own blood lipid results, okay? Publish it. Let them share it with you guys so that you will know whether they themselves, those gurus, if they themselves are living with high LDL cholesterol levels. If they are, great. You may then decide to follow that path. But obviously, if they are not, if they are having low LDL cholesterol levels, whilst at the same time encouraging you to live with high LDL cholesterol levels, then it, it should be obvious that they are being dishonest. They are lying to you. And uh, it should be up to you whether that is the path that you want to follow. The truth of the matter is that high LDL cholesterol level is harmful to your arteries, especially when it is coupled with high ApoB levels. And we have a huge body of scientific evidence to support this very view. Now, any guru telling you otherwise that high LDL cholesterol level is harmless is the one that is lying to you. That guru does not have your interest at heart. Those gurus are the ones lying to you, not the other way around. So, um, do let me know in the comment section how often you get your blood lipids tested. Is it every six months, every 12 months, every 18 months, every two years, every three years? Please do let me know in the comment section. I'm hoping that you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video, and also please share this video with your friends, your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. That's it for this very video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.